Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the webinar, Role Plays and Reducing Correctional Student Anxiety. We have Coach Alyssa Smedley with us, and she's going to be presenting today. But first, I want to um, hand it off to our partners at Burlington English, and everybody knows Robert Breitbart. So, Robert, take it over from here. Thanks so much, Bethel. And how about a huge round of applause out there and adult education world to Bethel, uh, Sharon Bonnie, the amazing uh, co-ab uh, board, and just everybody uh, who put on just uh, really just the best conference uh, I, I can I can remember there in Nashville co uh 2024. So congratulations to all of you. And uh, uh, congratulations to co for focusing so much rightfully on such a great uh, topic. And that's, you know, how can we make corrections a much, much su more successful place for individuals uh, returning into our community. And so love what the coach is going to talk about. You're in for a real treat. And with Burlington English, I've got to say congratulations. We had a fantastic panel uh, there at COABE. Uh, we had fantastic folks. Uh, thanks, Chris Cotto and Chemeketa and uh, uh, Donald Welling and her team and Tracy Hightower doing fantastic work with Burlington English uh, in Oregon, all the way to uh, Carter County Public Schools and Ariel Pachokas. Uh, they're doing amazing things at a jail program uh, in my former uh, town of Naples. So uh, with that, just quickly, what, what they're doing is, you know, they're focusing on success and if successful re-entry, preparing inmates for successful re-entry to start as close to booking as possible, how about giving them, particularly English language learners, much more than just basic conversational English? Why don't we have them, as you can see in our Burlington core, uh, learning about you know planning uh, for returning and having a great job either ready for them or working towards it? And that happens with Burlington core. Uh, the great thing, too, is not only are individuals uh, behind the fence, learning uh, English, but they're doing it in a high context way and with the kind of English language pr uh, proficiency standards and CCRSs uh, to let them go on to uh, high set and GED and uh, HSCs. Um, and then the next step we're seeing out there um, in corrections is uh, what we like to say, sitting with a virtual career counselor. And that's what we did with our career exploration and soft skills. And uh, so they do this at beginning, intermediate, and advanced levels. Uh, introduced to terms like career pathways, and all the time building a digital portfolio, a career pathway portfolio, uh, so really readies them for successful reentry. And lastly, we want to get them into uh, uh, IET or future study. I don't want any individual to enter into those programs cold. So we have uh, almost 200 English for Specific Careers in all the 16 Department of Labor career clusters, and we're and as Coach Smedley is going to do. Talk about role plays. Well, we've got it right in the program. And then lastly, we'd love to share more with you. So please reach out, contact us at burlingtonenglish.com slash contact. Um, Robert Breitbart, and it's great to be with you. And I have the joy of introducing the coach here. So, and you're in for a genuine treat. I've seen uh, Coach Medley present before. So Coach Medley, if you will, and I'll turn it over to you from here. Uh, tell us, how did you get to this place uh, that brings you this expertise and passion and drive? And then where do you hope you go to go with all of this? And I'll turn it over to you now. Okay, you think I know to unmute myself by now. Thank you. How I got here is really not so great. My dad went to prison when I was 10 years old. So I literally grew up because he didn't get out until I was 25. I literally grew up in some of the worst prisons in the state of Ohio, visiting my daddy. On my mom's side, there were ministers and teachers. So I learned the power of education. And I just morphed into this voice that can interpret both sides of that experience. That's what got me here. And I honestly have a passion about adult ed, correctional ed. We can change lives. And in that vein, I want to start with, I always try to, to start out with some inspiration and motivation. Before we get started, if I can get my screen ready. I hope everyone's having a great afternoon. So glad to be here with you. I want you to remember, if you haven't heard it recently, I want you to say quietly to yourself, the work I do is important. 
The work I do is important. I am making a difference, even if it doesn't feel like it. And finally, I am awesome and growing awesomer. That is a word, look it up, awesomer. I want to start there because we don't always hear that and feel it. But I hope today that you will walk away knowing how important the work you do really is. Now, I can't see the chat from where I am. I will be um, closing my screen and I'll try and catch up if you all have any questions or comments. But strap in and, and let's go for the ride. Every year, Coach Smedley does two unique workshops. I create two workshops. This year, I created role plays like I'm doing now, added some content, but I also created one called Fun and Games in Corrections. And you know, how do those two things go together? What do you mean fun and games and corrections? I don't feel a lot of fun in games, but as the educators, whether you are in a facility or in the community doing adult ed, we have to bring fun and games to our work. And let me show you what I mean. This is revolutionary. This is probably the best workshop I've created. And I, I vowed to share this information with every group I talked to in 2024. The goal of using fun and games in the classroom, let me break this down. This guy started school. Can you picture him with his little backpack running to class in preschool or kindergarten? He loved school. He loved his teachers and he thought he was smart. Just a few short years later, between fourth and ninth grade, we start to lose him. If he's falling behind, if there's a skills gap, he's not interested, all of a sudden school's not so fun anymore. It's not colorful. It's starting to fade. That's fourth through ninth. And the stats back me up on this, folks. This is when we begin losing him. By the time 10 through 12 comes along, if he's still around, he is totally disconnected. We don't see this young man again until he becomes an adult learner. And you see the color starts to come back. That's where we come in. He's understanding that maybe I'm not good in one area, but I can learn. I have pro-social friends now. I may have a wife and kids. I have a vision. And the most important thing, I have maturity. The research shows that criminal activity declines over the lifespan. He just needed time to grow up. So as we introduce fun and games and vibrant, wonderful activities with our students, we are basically doing one thing. We're trying to connect this guy back to this little guy. And that is why I use puzzles and rubber ducks and glitter, anything my building at the time will allow me to bring in. I use that in the classroom during those critical early weeks of our programs. Take a moment and think about what are some of the activities when you start out your program? We jump right into testing and assessments and we, we start them at the point of their failure. That's where we lost them. Now I know we have to do those things, but somehow sprinkle in fun activities that they may not expect and reignite this little boy's joy. I had a coworker, the first time I started using rubber ducks and fun stuff, he said, these are grownups. They're gonna be so offended by the stuff you're using. That never happened. They were rekindled. They love learning again. So if at all possible, introduce some fun and games. I created a half day workshop on this topic. If you're interested in learning more, just reach out to me. I'll put my email in the chat. So let's get started with our role plays for today. I need seven volunteers because I actually designed this for in-person, but we're gonna do some demonstration and we're gonna make this work virtually. I'm confident we'll do great. So if you'll put and raise your hand or put your name in the chat, um, Bethel will get your information and she will send you some materials. Okay, so we need seven volunteers, please. And before I go on, I didn't give my Coach Smedley disclaimer. I am very eccentric. 
but I am mostly harmless. So if you've never sat in on a session, you know, just remember that I'm, I'm mostly harmless. So let's talk about what skills do you gain by using role plays? And we're gonna today talk about the different kinds of role plays, but I wanna begin with what skills do our students pick up from it? Well, number one, problem solving. It's a very creative way to help them understand what's going on in their lives and how they can find unique ways to address it without getting in trouble. So number one is problem solving. Next is communication. I don't know that they always realize how they sound. So communication, other points of view. Do you have any students that can't see anybody else's point of view? I've run into a few in my years in the business. And finally, self-awareness. I have an activity that I do in my um, orientation packet. It's just called My Favorite Things. I ask their favorite foods, their favorite race car, their favorite color, just random things that are very non-threatening. Think about it. We've asked them clinical questions their whole lives. If any student has been marginalized, they're used to getting probed and, and all these questions. So I ask non-threatening questions. What's your favorite ice cream? And it has such a calming effect because no one has ever asked them. Their own parents may not know their favorite color. So that self-awareness piece is huge. And the more we do that and ask them, they start to remember, I kind of do like chocolate, yeah. So the skills gained through role play. This is part of a series. Today we're gonna do the re-entry, but I also have these broken down in life skills, employment skills, and social skills as well. So start with your student. If you're gonna make successful role plays, and I will have you creating your own before we're done today. First of all, figure out what is causing the anxiety. What are the main things that are stressing our students out? The main reason I created role play is because I noticed in our program, when I was back in Maryland, I worked at a max facility there for 10 years. Towards the end of their term, as they were about to be released, my students started unraveling. My best students, I'm like, what is going on? And one day, one of them was able to articulate it. He said, coach, I don't know where I'm gonna live. I don't know if I'm gonna be back on the streets, living in the park. I don't know, there were so many unknowns. He was just overcome. So I thought about that. Okay, we've gotta help him prepare for that release and reduce that stress. They're under enough stress. I'm gonna add in our materials today, a handout from Prison Fellowship, and they talk about the stages of incarceration. That's a real thing. Your students are gonna fluctuate through all of the feelings. It's like grief, they, it's, it mirrors the, the stages of grief, but the stages of incarceration, they go through a lot. We can help reduce some of that anxiety. So please, um, if you, print this out or you know, just have take notes, jot down what are some of the causes of anxiety that your students experience. Next, what are the sources of conflict upon release? We wanna help them during that incarceration and long after they're released. And part of doing that is anticipating what are some of the sources of conflict that'll be waiting for them. One that always happens is their old friends. Their old peer group wants them back. How do you handle that? When you've come out new, you've done two, three, five, 10, 20 years, you don't wanna come back. How do you handle keeping the same friends that you had before and being able to stay out of trouble? I had a student tell me once, he says, Coach Smedley, I figured out how to stay out of trouble when I get out. And he's 22 years old. I said, wow, what, tell me. He said, I'm gonna stay inside. That was heartbreaking because in his mind, the only way he could avoid trouble was staying inside and never going anywhere. I said, so you're never gonna go to a concert or go out on a date or you're just gonna stay inside? He said, yes. No, you don't have to live like that. We're gonna teach you the, the tools and skills you're gonna need to figure out how to navigate the world once you get out of here. And a lot of it ties back to behavior. Stop driving with an expired license or your, your tags aren't right. Certain things are easy peasy. 
but preparing them through role play can help them think it through. So here are the three elements of good role plays, and this will be your checklist as you create your own. Number one, it has to have an event that could happen. You want realistic examples. As I will put role plays together with my students, I would say, okay, um, you are on your way to the strip club, and then what happened? You know, I mean, and they're like, oh, Coach Smedley, what are you talking about, a strip club? I said, listen, I'm in the world. I understand things. So you want to use realistic examples. So you need an event that actually could happen. You need a problem to solve. The core of most of the different scenarios we're going to look at today involves some problem. And that's where our students get in trouble. Their solution isn't always the best. So you need an event that actually could happen and you need a problem to solve. Finally, you need enough detail to actually build a story. That's important because you don't wanna tell them too much. Sometimes in trying to teach them the lesson, we'll give them too much information. You've gotta leave some room for them to figure out, should I go this way or should I go that way? Give them just enough detail to build a story and see where it takes the process, see where you go with the story. So we're gonna first go over the three types of role plays that I use very often in our settings. After this theory, I'm gonna shut my presentation off and we're gonna do some demonstration. So I hope Bethel is working with those volunteers. We have three different types of role play we're gonna demonstrate. And each of you who volunteered will get the information that you need to move forward. So what are story starters? That's the first one. Story starters are two to three sentence stories that create a scenario to explore. And they can be very simple. You put it out there and the way I usually do it, um, I'll show you under best practices. I do it like a popcorn. I'll read the sentence and then the students will add on. The only rules are you can only add one sentence and you, you have to make it a realistic example. Our big goal with doing the story starters is not getting arrested or not getting in trouble today. So we're gonna act that out in a few minutes. Um, when can you use this? A lot of times the things we wanna use in class, it's not a matter of how you're delivering it, it's when, timing. So this is really good with new classes or existing, or you can even use it as an icebreaker. This is a very quick, fun activity. So you don't have to worry about you know what will what will happen with the group? What direction will this go? These are short and punchy. You want to have, the, as I said, the students add one sentence to the story as we go around the room popcorn style. The teacher, your role will be to say, and then what happened? And then another student adds another sentence. And then what happened? And you keep going until you've run out of story. Finally, the goal is to avoid getting arrested or getting in trouble. Now I'll tell you, sometimes we can't come up with any other option because our student has put themselves in a situation in our scenario that they're going to get in trouble. But we wanna encourage creative out of the box thinking that will help them not get in trouble. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Story starters. The next one are actual scripted role plays. This is the lowest hanging fruit, and this is where the teacher has the most control. They are prepared scenarios that are scripted for each character and provide exact direction. The, the movement, the scene location, whatever's happening in the story, you control all of it. Now I know teachers don't have to be in control, right? Here are some best practices if you use scripted role play. Again, it's uh, good for new classes because you're trying to build the skill. So the teacher controls the outcome or lesson to be learned. Students can be encouraged to reflect on the lesson learned or discuss alternative outcomes. What do I mean? You have put it in their face. This is what happened. This character said this, this character did that, and it's there, boom. We can now reflect and see if the students agree with the outcome. Do they have a different version of something that could happen? But you control it, but you know what you're trying to put in their mind. Like with our kids. I love letting my daughter think she made a decision when I've used my Jedi mind tricks and helped her make that decision. 
love it. We're already experienced with this, folks. And then finally, you can use it as a writing assignment or some kind of a dramatic activity in terms of the alternate income, uh, outcome, like I mentioned. So that is the actual scripted role play. And our third type is the, you have the least control, is the improvs. And they are dramatic activities where the teacher provides the themes, the characters, or the issues. All you do is give them the ingredients. You have no idea what they're going to cook up. The students will work together to design or act out their interpretation. Why is this the least control that the educator has? Because you don't know how those students are going to work together. I don't recommend using it for new classes because you don't know the students well enough. It can break out in a fight if somebody is inappropriate. So again, use that in a stable learning community. You don't want to use this with, with new classes. You have the least creative control. The students have the highest level of creative control. That's why you must know the students that you are introducing this type of dramatic activity to. And it requires that the students work together. If they don't know each other, they may not work that well together. All right, we're gonna end with a, a video. So I'll leave that. I'm gonna shut down now and see what you all are saying. Someone loves Jedi mind tricks all the time. All right, right, okay. So I see the communication with our volunteers. That is awesome. That is awesome. So if you have any questions, um, I'm trying to scan through. I don't see a lot of questions. Okay, okay. So um, we're going to start with the first one. Bethel, we can get the first three volunteers. Yeah. So it's Wendy, Evelyn, and Richard are the first. Um... Excellent. Can they come on camera? Can we bring them on up on the stage? If I... I told you there'd be a lot of logistics, folks. Bear with us, please. <laughs> I think I was. Yep, she's rejoining. So Wendy should be able to now, and I'll do Evelyn. Oh, excellent. If you'd like Coach to follow up with you, please give me your email. And I can put mine in the chat now myself. And Richard will be doing the first and the third um, activity. He volunteered for both. So Yay! Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Richard. <laughs> okay. Okay, my, there's my email. Anyone that wants to reach out to Coach Smedley, be inspired at coachsmedley.com. Awesome, awesome. So can we see one another? Can you all possibly come on camera? If you can. I know we're reaching out from all over and somewhere at work. If you can come on, that would be awesome. Yay. Hi, Evelyn. Hello. Richard. Can we get Wendy? Welcome. And can we get Tiffany? Okay. So the first one will be the story starter. You guys heard me read a minute ago. Oh, you will get my presentation. I know I have extra stuff that you all didn't get because the magician can't give away their secrets before the show. I will have that available for you. You'll get my slides. Okay. Um, like I said, with story starters. I will read the scenario and then we're just going to go. This is not planned. I'm not going to say who's going to go first, second, third. Let's watch our body language best we can in these little boxes and just keep adding to the story one sentence at a time. Any questions? Um, I had clicked the link to see the script. Mm -hmm. but that's I the third. Yeah, that's the third. That will be the third activity. Oh, right? Yeah, not this one. No, the first activity, she's just going to read something, and then you're okay. going to follow up with like a scenario afterwards. But the, the link I sent you was the third one. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Yes, thank you. Okay, everyone, just take a deep breath, and I'm going to put a scenario out there, a few sentences, 
And we're just going to go take it as far as we can. Remember, the only rule, real rule is to stay out of trouble, not get arrested today. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny was released from prison four months ago. He landed a good paying job in construction. Yay. Every Friday night after work, Johnny goes to the bar. And then what happens? He meets a girl. He meets a girl. And then what happens? They want to play a game of pool together. Oh, okay. And then what happens? He finds out she plays better than he does. <laughs> and then what happens? He treats her as saying that they can have a beer. And then what happens? He starts feeling uh, a little buzzed. And then what happens? He invites her over to his place. And then what happens? She says no. And then what happens? He says, but I, your body language said differently. What happens next? He said, you're reading it wrong. And then what happens? He said, no, I wasn't. <laughs> And then what happens? She says, I'm in control of what I'm sending as a message. And what happens next? She leaves. Okay. Wrap. At any moment, you see how this kind of goes all over the place. And then he gets angry and chokes her to death. I mean, it could be anything. <laughs> You guys did great. You played it safe, but you did good. But do you see how this would work? Yes. Do you see how this would work in your class? Just go on. That probably went a little longer than I would do in class. But believe me, your students will be much more colorful. You all are a conservative crowd. So. <laughs> <laughs> but do you see how you might have some fun with this? Give me some feedback, actors. Yeah, it's 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 sort of pressurized. It is a because uh, I can see ways that it could go. You know, because I was shocked when uh, she said they, they go. I said I said go to go to go to the bar, right? No, who said go to the bar? You did. Yeah. I did. Okay, <laughs> right, right. Mm -hmm. But uh, I was expecting her to say no. And here's the thing, at that point, you know, after the evening was over and he accepted no, he called an Uber and went home. You know, I mean, there are so many ways that this could play out, but that's the point. You want your students to develop the skill to make the right choice. And guess what? You do this a lot while you have them in your class, they will build the muscle and they'll be able to apply it out on the field. This is a scrimmage. We need them to be ready to make the right call out there on the field. All right. Thank you. So we have one more story starter. And you don't have to play it safe. Have fun. Gabby is being released from prison in two days. She can live with her mother or with her on again, off again boyfriend. Gabby has a visitor. When she enters the visiting area, Gabby sees her ex-boyfriend. And what happens next? She tries to leave. And then what happens? Too late, he already recognized her. And then what happens? They start talking and she's remembering how she felt about him and wants to get back together with him. And then what happens? He may He's have second sick. thoughts. And then what happens? He seems to feel the same way. And what happens next? 
They go back to his place and hook up. Well, she's still incarcerated. <laughs> this is visiting day. Oh, okay. I'm still visiting day. Okay, okay. Never mind. No, we don't want her escaping today. That'll get her in trouble. <laughs> A little prison humor, folks. <laughs> so what she, she, has to, she has to talk to him. There's no way out of not speaking to him. It's visiting day. I I know because I used to visit my ex husband mm -hmm. in prison. Mm -hmm. So I would wrap that one there. But in my discussion afterwards with the students, I would say, what is the best choice? And there are many questions. What's her relationship with her mother? Is her mother taking care of her kids since she's been incarcerated? I mean, there's so many elements, but you could have fun with this by helping them to process what is going on. And what's so beautiful about it, it's like they're the, the outside observer who can watch this. It's like a lab. They can watch which way things go. I love what you said, Wendy. The, the feelings were rekindled. Yeah, it always starts out like that. So having fun and selecting the right material. Vanessa said he tells her he loves her. Yes. Mm -hmm. So having that material, that's why I asked you, what is the source of their anxiety? What are some of the conflicts they're going to have outside? That gives you your material. You'll know where to start and where you're trying to lead the students. I had a student who was being released and he actually asked me, coach, where should I go? Should I go to my grandma's house or to my, my ex? And he wanted me to tell him what to do. And I'm not in that business. Coach is going to empower you. I said, where will you find peace? And I walked away. So now I'm Confucius. You know, I, I walked away. <laughs> But I didn't want, because you don't want them becoming dependent on you making decisions for them. They've got to learn how to do this for themselves. So, all right. Well, that wraps up story starters. Um, I hope you guys got some ideas. But again, the, the choice of material begins with who your students are and what they need. Will we see those? Will we get a copy of those slides that you yes. can you broke it down? Okay, thank you. Yes, you will. So you get my presentation and you get um, the three different activities that I'm using today. Absolutely. Thank you, folks. Yay. Can we react to our, our actors? Yay. <laughs> thank you. Next, we're going to move on to the scripted role plays. Okay, so Hi. that is that will be Carmen Stewart and um, Evelyn. I'm going to promote them both. Okay, awesome. And Richard, you can stay on because you're on the next activity. So if you want to just stay on, you can. Okay. Is is that another Evelyn? Um, let me see. This one is or no. Um, sorry, there is a lot of back and forth. <laughs> Um, let's see. No, it's going to be Tiffany. I am sorry. It's Tiffany. Okay. Thank you. Yep. You're, you're welcome. Oh, great. Great, Tiffany. Um, I do want to talk about one thing I just saw in the chat. Um, someone, Azola, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. It's beautiful. Um, has used this and said it, it relaxes the class. It really relaxes them. And you know why? Because it's not them dealing with their lives, it's them looking at somebody else. And it's always easy for us to see what somebody else is doing wrong. And that's what I love about it. Just have them do this. My students would do 20, 30, 50 of these over the course of their time with me. Because the more we did it, the more drills we did, the better choices they will make in their own lives. They're relaxed because finally it's not them making all the trouble and messing up. They can actually give good input on another person's scenario. Whenever I do activities like this, I don't begin with the student. I begin with someone else real quick, my rubber duck activity. I've referenced that today a lot. I have big ducks and I have little ducks. I actually bought in physical rubber ducks. So as I'm checking in at the security station, they're like, uh, Coach Smedley, 22 large ducks, uh, 15 small ducks. Yeah, they're checking me in. But what I would do, I would give them a scenario, much like the ones we're doing today, and I would have them label the person's ducks. If someone needs to get their equivalency, that's a big duck. It's going to take a while. But if they need a birth certificate, that's a little duck. The reason I do that is because for some of our students, all stress is equal. 
Coach, you just don't understand. I've got to do a lot of stuff. Well, what do you have to do, Billy? I got to get my birth certificate. Okay, we can do that. But in Billy's mind, because he's so stressed, that is just as big as getting finishing school and passing his test. We have to teach them how to prioritize. So the more scenarios we give them and have them label the big duck or the little duck, it helps them to see it. And then for the very last activity, I give them a blank page with little ducks and big ducks. Let's do yours. But now they've done it. They know how. They're not as afraid of facing their own issues. So starting with other and then moving it inward is how you win that game. Don't start with them. That reminds them of the shame, the, the pain. So you start with someone else and then bring it internal. Okay. Our second activity. I will be the narrator. And then Tara and Daniel, my two characters, you will act this out. Daniel has been home for two months after serving five years in prison. He is happy to return home to his baby mama, Tara, and his six-year-old son. While Daniel was locked up, Tara earned money by doing hair. Lately, though, Tara is doing hair less and depending on Daniel to provide for the family more and more. That's where we open. Action. Tiffany, who do you want to be? Um, I'll be Daniel if you want to be Tara. Okay, fine. <clears throat> okay, so just think about it. My cousin said he could put you on. All you got to do is move a few packages a month and you can make mad money. I'm not trying to go back to prison, Tara. Danny, you think I felt like sending you packages and putting money on your books for five years? We do what we got to do, bro. I got a good job. I'll be done with automotive school in 15 months. Why are you pressuring me to get back in the game? Because I'm tired of waiting. What are you afraid of? Don't you want your family to have nice things? Your son don't even have the latest Jordans. It's embarrassing. Cut. Let's test this against our three elements of a good role play. Is it an event that could actually happen? For sure. Okay. Um, what was my next one? Problem. <laughs> could it actually happen? Let's review here. Is it a problem to solve? Is there a problem in there? What is the problem? She wants him to make more money. She wants more money. And she wants it now. Mm -hmm. And she didn't do five years. He did. So now Jonathan has some decisions to make. Or Daniel, I'm sorry. Daniel has some decisions to make. Does he stay with this person? What are the, mm -hmm. the, the arguments for him staying? Well, there's a six-year-old baby. Mm -hmm. And she stood by him. I've heard guys actually say that. Well, they were loyal. They stood by me while I was in prison. Well, but you both have changed. Okay. So is it an event that could happen? Is there a problem to solve? And did we have just enough detail to build a story? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's how you can always go back and test your ideas and see if this is a viable role play that you could use with your students. Any comment on this before I do the last activity? And Carmen, you had a lot of attitude as Tara. This but Tiffany, I loved story. your energy. I'm not <laughs> going back to prison. I loved it. <laughs> Talk to me. So how would you lead a discussion with your students after seeing that? And I keep them short on purpose because, you know, our students don't like to be lectured to. They're kind I'm, of like kids. You I'm know. asking them if they know of anyone who's experienced the scenario because chances are they've seen it or heard it before. This isn't new. And then ask, you know, what was the outcome? And then now, now what could have happened? What other options or choices were out there? Because sometimes that's the thing. It's like they don't think about what's a different pathway. They it's like, this is what I do. This is what I've seen. And they don't really have that chance to consider like how, how could this have played out? Although, you know, you're, you're doing your time. All you're thinking about is what would have happened if I had done one thing different, you know, back then. Yes. Just yes. gotten in the car with my sister instead of going with my brother, or if I'd have just stayed at home, like my mom asked me to, or if I'd have just, you know, whatever. So. Yes. I actually tell students, if you would wait five minutes before you act on any impulse, just five mm -hmm. minutes. That's that's all it takes, just five more minutes. And if it still makes sense to you, okay. 
but sometimes that five minute pause, my dad told me once, and he's passed on now, I wish he was here because he would be so good helping me with these workshops. Mm. He told me once, he said he went home on a weekend to party and he came home 15 years later. Mm. And that is that was so real for him. He made one mistake, the only time he'd ever been in trouble. And it cost him 15 years. He took a life. So I asked my students, pause, just take five minutes, breathe, yeah. you know. <clears throat> Tiffany, any thoughts on that? Um, how does Daniel stay strong? I mean, how do we empower our students to be strong enough to maybe walk away from a relationship? Um. I am. Um, I actually don't work with the prison students. I have a, an instructor that does. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be sharing all this with her, but I, um, I don't know. I don't, you guys definitely present some good problem solving skills for them to think about. I'm um, like, like Carmen said, they don't even think about it, you know? Yes. And part of that goes back to, you remember that little marginalized student, the little you know redhead baby, when he got into those dark days, that's when they're just operating off of, first of all, their brain isn't finished cooking yet, first of all. But on top of that, who they are around, they're being influenced by other folks. And there's so much going on, peer pressure and wanting to fit in somewhere. If you don't fit in at school, maybe home is a nightmare. You want to fit in somewhere. And that's where gangs come in. I mean, it's all connected. If we really just step back and look at it, even if they haven't been incarcerated, it might just be that they dropped out of school, but they're going to have menial jobs. It's going to affect every part of their lives. So that's why I broadened my thought about this, not just correctional students, but even broader. You know, any adult learner that is trying to reconnect and, and get back on track with their lives. Okay. So thank you, second group. Awesome. And we are going to turn the corner to our last activity. I hope you guys are picking up some good information. I want to see you doing this in your classrooms. And, and here's something I want to say. Don't be afraid to fall on your face. Sometimes it won't work. And that's okay, too. I learned just as much from the times that my ideas have failed as I have from the times that I knocked it out of the park. Because then I'll sit down with the guys, or, or I've mostly worked with men, so I always say guys, but with my students, I would say, okay, well, what didn't you like about that? What could coach have done different? Do you want to stand up and teach this? Start getting their input, Mr. Critical. <clears throat> so I like the scenarios would help GED students who are in the court system and trying to stay out. Yes, yes. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. All right. The very last activity is an improv. We have two actors. Richard is back. Who's our other pro? Who's the mother? I am. Lisa, you will be the mother. Awesome. So I'm going to read. Now, this is an improv. Usually I would pass this out to the students so they would be reading it. Everything I've read to you today, I would give it to my students to see it. But here's our improv. Jonathan was told to come to the Springfield office of the Health and Human Services building to get his food stamp card. He asked his mother to give him a ride. His mother is not happy, but drives him because he promised her some of his food stamps. She's waiting in the car. Jonathan goes inside the office, but is told that the caseworker is off today. He needs to come back tomorrow. Jonathan tells the staff he had an appointment for today. He's told he has to come back tomorrow. He is stressing out over what and how to tell his mother. Let's watch. Well, Jonathan, I, I see you're upset about something. What, what did they tell you um, when you went to get your food stamps? Well, um, I, I, I wasn't able to get any stamps. Um, my caseworker wasn't there and they want me to come back tomorrow. I'm hoping you will uh, be able to bring me bring me back tomorrow, if that's okay. Well, well, Jonathan, you know, I've, I've got a job and, um, and I only budgeted enough, enough money um, for gas. Um, and so this is going to take my food money, which I was really relying on that on those food stamps that were going to come, you know, today. Um, 
So we're going to have to think this through, but don't don't be upset. We're, we're going to think this through. We're going to come and find a solution um, on, on how you can get back here and I can still go to work. And we'll, we're going to we're going to look at maybe some some transportation to get you get you over back over here. Ah, that that that's a relief. I uh, I don't want to I didn't want to um, disappoint you. Didn't, didn't want to. Uh, I know I know what you've been going through, and I know how much uh, trouble I've I've been causing by the things that I've been doing. But, well, Jonathan, we're we're on a, we're going to be on a new we're going to be on a new road here, and and we're going to go um, at this at a positive manner because life is full of twists and turns and curveballs, and we're we're just gonna we're gonna think things through a little bit a little better and find out what's the bet you know better solution to everything in life, you know, and this is just one of those things where we're going to work it out. I'm 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 glad to hear that. I'm really glad to hear that. Yeah. So we'll 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 look at our options. We're gonna get on home. And we're gonna you know call call a couple of people that that would be available. That's a plan. That's a good plan. Thank you. And wrap. Yeah. So I'm gonna go off script here. And a good job, both of you. Awesome job. Awesome, Lisa. You are the kind of parent that everyone getting out needs. You really are. What my students would say to that, that ain't my mother. You don't know my mother. I That's not what I expected. Kids. That wasn't what I expected from what yes. I've heard from the guys in my classes. Okay. Yes. So what I'm going to ask, call is, uh, Coach Smedley is going to put a call out for a, a ratchet street mother. <laughs> if somebody join us and, and, and raise your hand. I need the other kind of parent. Because here's the thing. I learned this early on. I have a very calm, soft-spoken kind of way about me. But I had one student in, in 20 years, one student pushed me to the brink of just going off on him because, and he told me later, coach, I, I don't, I'm not used to all that soft and feel good, touchy-touchy. He didn't understand love and kindness because he'd never experienced it. So he was just pushing and pushing, just waiting to see what I would do. Now, I'm from Cleveland, and I made that clear to all of my students. I still got Cleveland hood in me, okay? But one day, it was probably eight weeks into our program. This young man had pushed me and pushed me, and I couldn't take it anymore. I just kept ignoring the bad behavior because I knew he was smart. And I, I'm like, we can get there. We can get into the, in that. Um, but one day, I saw him talking to a new student. He leans over, man, this program's no good. It's terrible. You know, you shouldn't stay here. I saw red. It's one thing if you want to sabotage yourself, but you're not going to carry somebody else out of here with you. I said, well, if you don't like it, you can get the out of here. I went off. I mean, Coach Smith, it, it shocked me how bad I went off on this guy. I went home and I'm washing dishes that night and reflecting over my day like I do before I pray. And it hit me. I said, you know, I was a little hard on him. So you know what I did? This is a true story. I said, I wonder if they'd let me talk to that young man. And I said, oh, those officers aren't going to let me talk to him. So I called the jail, just going through the motions. I didn't really mean, you know, to, to make an apology. I was going through the motions. I'll be honest. I called the officer station and they knew me. They're like, oh, sure, Coach Smedley, I'll go get him. So now I'm on the hook. I have to make good on whatever I'm going to say to this kid. And here's what I did. The officer put me on speaker and he, the young man came over and I told him, I said, I know we had a hard day today. And I said, I'm not apologizing because you had that coming. It's been eight weeks. You had that coming. I'm proud of myself that I didn't go off on you sooner. But I said, can you trust the process? I see how smart you are. You can be a leader if you're not trying to be such a disruptor. And I used my calmest voice and I, I meant it. I was genuine. And so what I didn't realize, he said, okay. He said, I'll be back tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow, coach. Now this was like eight o'clock in the evening. I called him from home. I called the officer station. What I didn't realize was they had me on speaker and there were people, you know, in the unit, there's nothing else to do. So they're all standing around eavesdropping. 
The next morning, I had a stack of referrals, people trying to get into our program. <laughs> because this lady went home and called back to check on. And I really just wanted to make sure he was okay. Because I went in. I mean it. And I didn't, I didn't like that because I love my students. But just that one act of kindness. But after that moment, he learned that you don't have to push people to that to get attention. And I told him, you're proud that you made me act like Cleveland. I said, that's not how I want to be in my classroom. And so after that, we had a better understanding. So my point is, and I need a volunteer. Is there anybody out there to do that again and, and be a little harder on Richard? Sometimes they don't understand the soft, loving, gentle approach. All they know is the hard, you know, the, the cactus life that they've lived. Does that make sense to anybody? Can I get a volunteer? Yes. Evelyn. Okay. So you are now <laughs> Jonathan's mother. Can we do that scene from the beginning, Richard? Sure. So you've come out of the office and the, the caseworker's not <clears throat> here. Uh, okay. Uh, Mama, I got to tell you something. Um, I wasn't able to get the stamps. Uh, the caseworker wasn't there. And uh, I'm going to have to come back tomorrow. Uh, I know this probably pisses you off, but I'm uh it, there's nothing I can do. I, I told him I had an appointment. I'm here. I told him I don't know if I can get a ride tomorrow. Uh, I, I don't know what else to say. Well, you told him right because you wasted my time bringing you today and you didn't know your caseworker was not going to be here. I didn't well, you're know. You're going to have to I, find your own way back tomorrow. I, I, I didn't know they were going to be here. I had an appointment. I expected them to be there. And they didn't call you at the last minute and tell you that they were not going to be in? Obviously, they didn't, Ma. They didn't. They didn't. And I'm sure you I, didn't, I can get the uh, you didn't ex I, explain to them that I have a job to go to? Um, I just, I, you know, I, I just told them I don't know how I'm going to get over here tomorrow. Well, because you told I, them right. Because I, I, I know you got a job. I know you got a job. But, uh. You know, I, I promised you I was going to be able to give you some of the stamps. I still want to do that. I just got to get back over here tomorrow. That's all. Then I think you have to be a man and stand up on your own two feet and get your way back over there tomorrow. Yes, right. that's a wrap. We're going to stop. Right. Thank <laughs> you. Now, wasn't that a little more uncomfortable, Richard? Hell yeah. <laughs> I'm grateful. And I wish I wish more family members were like Lisa. Lisa, thank you for the kindness. Right. Um, but here's here, we do them a disservice if we don't have them deal with both. Oh, somebody's right. crying. How do we help them deal with that? If they have that kind of family, we have to prepare them. And then when you said be a man, I mean, you're just going for the jugular. Yeah. yeah. You know, and this kind of reaction from family is what pushes them back into the life. Yes. But if we can have them hear it, I tell I would tell them we do mock interviews. I say, I'd rather say no to you so you can practice and getting me to a yes. So when you go out there, you can get a yes. You're going to hear no's, but I want you to get to learn how to work through hearing the no's. Mm -hmm. Just like in this case, how do you work through the parent talking to you like that or whoever, mm -hmm. relative, friends, whoever. Yeah. Oh, I love what Carmen just said. Carmine just said, returning citizens who've been out a while can be an amazing support. Yeah, they understand. They understand. So they're not going to pop off at him or her like that. But we got to take them on that emotional journey of how do you handle when somebody talks about you and pulls you down like that? Because mm -hmm. I had a student tell me, say, Coach, you're so positive and friendly. He said, I don't have anybody in my life like that when I get out. Mm -hmm. So how do we build their skills and empower them? Okay. Awesome. Thank you, last group. That was great. Once again, I hope you all picked up something good. I have one last thing to do. After you do the role plays, after you design these unique and you know customized experiences for your students who you know, one thing that always works is a good emotional tear-jerking video. 
And that's what we're going to show next. Bethel's going to put that out here. And this is my last activity, folks. Looks like rain again today. Dark clouds gather and fill the sky. Don't know how to talk to you, just know how to say goodbye. You ain't been gonna drive this life out of here! Go back where you came from! Learn this thing! Go back where you came from! First time I saw that, I was shocked. <laughs> I was absolutely, anybody there with me? You know, and yes, I will add this to the materials. What could y'all want to hear from our teachers? What would you do with that? Um, the first thing that came to mind with the groups that I work with was telling them before they watch the video, as you're watching this, which side of you was touched the most? The little boy or woman, or the, the little boy or girl, or the man or woman? Are they thinking back to how their childhood was? Or what kind of parent they are, or will be when they get out or you know are back connected with their families? That's a gut punch. Sometimes I have some that are sad and some are funny. That's a gut punch right there. Children see and children do. Yes. Oh. Yeah, I would, I would ask, uh... I would ask, um, for how many is this considered normal or abnormal? Yes. You know? Uh, yes. Yeah. Because even, I can speak to that a little bit, Richard, in our last yeah. few seconds here. Um, I grew up in a house and a family with a lot of violence. You know, I had six uncles. I had seven uncles. Six of them went to prison. My one aunt did eight years in the federal system. And then I've already mentioned my dad. I saw violence. I saw weapons. I saw drugs. I, that was just part of the culture when I would visit those relatives. Fortunately, I got to see the other side of the world, too, with my mom and, and you know her, her relatives who were teachers or ministers. But it is so important to understand what is somebody's normal and not judge it. I loved both sides of my family, but I also knew I don't want to be like that. You know, it was an early lesson, but you'd have to understand what have people lived through. And some of us, honestly, with our middle class sensibilities, we have no clue what folks have lived through. And we sometimes bring that into the classroom and it blinds us. It's a blind spot. That's why understanding that marginalized student and what they may or may not have gone through, it will really help you save more of the, the students that you work with, especially early on in your program. I suspect that the first few weeks, you're losing folks that you could keep if we adjust our approach just a little bit. I know in, in, in one of the facilities I worked in, sometimes people would just cycle through. They sign up, drop out, sign up, drop out. You know, it took four or five tries, but guess what? I've got to report my outcomes. I can't afford for you to take four times to finish this program, if I'm being honest. So, you know, I just hope some of this helped you all today. You will get all of this material. I am really excited. I hope you enjoyed your first experience with Coach Smedley or your, you know, coming back to work with me again. Bethel, I'm handing it to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Coach Smedley. I am launching a poll. If you could take that poll before you exit um, and just let us know. And then everyone have a great weekend. Um, I know a lot, a lot of people are out of the office today, but if you have a long weekend, then enjoy the long weekend with your family. Um, 
and we'll see you, you all hopefully soon. Thank I you seem so to much. be um I seem to be identified as one of the panelists, I think. And yeah. I can't can you put me back so I can do the the um, poll? Yeah. Becca, okay. John, yep. John asked a while ago um, about certificates um, after the program. As far as how you get the materials, um, wherever the the uh, replay is posted, you'll have the materials there too. Yes. I'll send those over today. Yes. Um, um, you receive your certificate um, 24 hours after the live webinar ends. So um, everyone will receive their certificate probably by Monday. I would say Monday morning. Um, if you don't, then just reach out to us and we can send that to you as well. Bethel, can I get a printout of the chat? Absolutely. I have some emails in there. That would be very helpful. Thank yep. you, everyone. I'll email that to you. Thank you, everyone. Have a great weekend. Bye now.